Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The US Navy has always possessed an impressive and capable Navy. From aircraft carriers to nuclear submarines and destroyers and more, the Navy's fleet encompasses nearly 500 ships in total. Since the early 2000s, the Navy has been investing billions of dollars into a new class of boat called a littoral combat ship, or LCS. These surface vessels are designed to move quickly and attack efficiently in shallow waters near shore. One of the most recent additions to the LCS fleet is the USS Billings, which was launched in 2017. Like many newer vessels, the Billings was constructed onshore and launched via a slipway. This sideways launch system is ideal for deploying a boat into a channel or river and features the boat positioned atop a steel frame. This frame is attached to several slanted beams, which, when released, allow the ship to slide into the water powered only by its own weight. Before entering active service, newly constructed U.S. Navy ships are formally inducted through a time-honored tradition known as the Commissioning Ceremony. This significant event features speeches by naval commanders, distinguished guests, and other high-ranking officials who speak about the ship's capabilities, its mission, and the proud legacy of the United States Navy. That built this remarkable ship before us. Often likened to a graduation ceremony for the vessel, the commissioning is both ceremonial and deeply symbolic, marking the moment a ship officially becomes part of the active fleet. The event is typically open to the public and attended by the families of the sailors assigned to the ship. For USS Billings, but I also... Reinforcing the connection between the Navy and the nation it serves. Proud to serve in your great Navy. One of the most poignant moments occurs when the ship's commanding officer formally reports for duty. Commodore Johnson, USS Billings is man and ready. I report for duty. We have already begun developing... The USS Billings LCS-15 was officially commissioned on August 3rd, 2019, in a formal hour-long ceremony held in Florida. Since entering service, the ship and its crew of approximately 50 sailors have undertaken multiple deployments, primarily operating in the Eastern Pacific and Caribbean. One of its key features is a stern-mounted internal ramp, enabling the rapid launch and recovery of rigid hull inflatable boats and other high-speed craft. The vessel is also equipped with a flight deck and an enclosed hangar capable of supporting multiple helicopters or unmanned aerial systems for extended reconnaissance and support missions. Every inch aboard an LCS is purposefully utilized, reflecting a design philosophy focused on modularity and operational efficiency. Given its performance and mission flexibility, the LCS platform has proven to be a valuable asset, and the U.S. Navy is expected to continue expanding this class in the years ahead. LCS are designed to be a uh, single mission platform that has modularity that can change out 
uh, where that principal mission set is uh, assigned to. Uh, so the modularity gives us the ability, uh, based upon what the requirements for the mission sets are, uh, to swap out the mission package in, uh, computing environment and the mission package hardware to execute different mission sets uh, throughout the fleet commander's areas of responsibility. Life on board can be hectic as the ships are designed to leverage technology and utilize minimal human resources. Depending on the mission package selected, the vessel will shift into different configurations to best deal with that threat. Vessels like the Billings are also very well armed many boasting a wide array of torpedoes, surface-to-air missiles, and deck-mounted, remote control guns like the MK-110. But despite these lethal capabilities, many LCS will open their doors to the public at times. Tours like this allow civilians to get an idea of what life is like aboard a highly advanced naval vessel with crew members showcasing everything from the ship's weaponry to firefighting tactics and more. Depending on their mission, vessels like the Billings can sometimes spend months away from shore at a time. And since they are designed to operate as stealthily as possible, underway replenishment is not always an option. This is where the ship's large aft flight deck comes in handy. From here, the ship can deploy helicopters and drones for reconnaissance purposes. However, they can also receive supplies via a process known as vertical replenishment. Designed for agility in nearshore operations, the U.S. Navy's littoral combat ships reflect a modern approach to maritime dominance, an approach echoed in quieter yet no less vital form by the Royal Navy's river-class patrol vessels as they safeguard coastal waters with enduring vigilance. Maritime exercises with allied nations like Ukraine are important River-class patrol boats and Ukrainian island-class boats work together during Exercise Seabreeze 21 to improve maritime security and interoperability. Tactical formations, search and rescue missions, and boarding drills were all part of this cooperation. Furthermore, the British Batch Two River Class Offshore Patrol Vessel HMS Trent and the Arleigh Burke Class Guided Missile Destroyer USS Ross executed towing drills, exhibiting flawless synchronization. Additionally, the crews of the Ross and Trent switched places, exposing sailors to one another's operational conditions and promoting collaboration and understanding. These drills secure the dedication of allied navies to operational preparedness and collective maritime defense. Other role players, like the Italian Bedica offshore patrol ship, generally protect their own shores. The Bedica, built as a member of the Commandante class, uses its sophisticated radars, helicopters, and sensors to scour the Mediterranean. With her Smart SMK-2 radar, Bedica can locate and follow targets in the air as well as on land across extended distances. Effective naval vessels do not have to be large. They just need the right crew, sensors, and resources, such as air support.
The United States Navy has an amphibious ready group consisting of a group of warships known as an amphibious task force and a landing force consisting of 5,000 people. Both of these elements, along with supporting units, are trained, organized, and equipped to perform amphibious operations. A notable warship in the U.S. Navy's Amphibious Ready Group is the Landing Platform Dock, a warship capable of transporting troops into the war zone. particularly using landing craft and landing craft air cushion LCAC hovercraft. LPBs can operate helicopters directly from their flight decks, much like the littoral combat ships providing vital air support for troop movements, resupply, and rapid response from sea. The U.S. Navy's Amphibious Ready Group consists of another unique warship, known as a Landing Ship Dock LSD, capable of supporting operations, including landings onto hostile shores via LCAC, conventional landing craft, and helicopters. Over the years, the United States Marine Corps has used several vehicles for amphibious troop transport, but currently it uses the Assault Amphibious Vehicle AAV, particularly due to its ship-to-shore transport capability. During amphibious operations, the AAV can transport several troops and their equipment in a single lift. The amphibious assault vehicle's design is a game changer. Armed with a 50 caliber M2HB machine gun and a Mark 1940MM grenade launcher, This enables the AAV to perform ship-to-shore operations while providing devastating firepower. AAVs are capable of carrying 21 combat equipped Marines or 10,000 pounds of cargo at a maximum speed of 37 knots on the water. Modern warships are designed with an enhanced well deck situated at the rear, which is periodically filled with water to launch and recover amphibious vehicles. Depending on the class, amphibious warships can accommodate up to 52 vehicles in its well deck. AAVs are parked in the exact order they are supposed to exit the well deck at the time of departure. Once the well deck control officer gives the order via radio, the AAVs drive out of the well deck one after another. The AAVs trail each other while floating on the water and ultimately land on shore. However, there has always been an issue with the AAV's level of armor protection. Recently, the U.S. Marine Corps has decided to replace AAVs with Amphibious Combat Vehicles ACVs, which are better armed and less complicated than AAVs. Moreover, 
the ACVs are equipped with wheels instead of tracks, which ultimately makes them a better option for ground missions. From littoral combat ships like the USS Billings to advanced amphibious vehicles supporting marine operations, the modern U.S. Navy continues to evolve, balancing speed, flexibility, and firepower across a wide range of missions. Whether operating in shallow coastal waters or supporting full-scale amphibious landings, these vessels and their crews play a vital role in securing maritime interests at home and abroad. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.